All right, hey everyone, it is PC Strava here once again with another video. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how I personally make my thumbnails. Um, so yeah, can I just start off this video by saying I'm not showing you how I do this so that you guys straight out copy me. So please, although I do say that you can use all of these methods and for sure you guys can make thumbnails like mine. However, I do not want you to plain and simple just copy my thumbnails exactly the way they are because I do like some originality so please feel free to like this tutorial and to use it but just please try to be creative in your own sense too and now without further ado let's get into this okay so the first thing I do is I just go onto Google straight out and I just type in Animal Jam background um, this just kind of gives me the background for what I need, um, and pretty much I have tons of different ones, obviously. They're pretty much normally just Animal Jam kind of themes, so that's why I like to use them, because of course my videos are Animal Jam. So I'm just going to go with this one, um, and I'm just going to start out just save it. So for the font, I use a program called GIMP. It is free to use, you can download it, I will have the link in the description. So we're just going to make a new kind of canvas, we're actually going to delete the background um, because I want a transparent background, this is pretty important. We're going to go and we're going to make a text here, um, and we're just going to just make our toolbox. Um, for the font you want, you can easily just go and download it. Um, there's plenty of tutorials on YouTube on how to do that, I will not be showing you how in this video. However, it's very simple to do. Alright, so here's kind of the thing. We're going to now choose a color for this. I'm going to make it green, I feel like. I feel like that would be kind of good. We're just going to go with the pastel kind of green here. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our layers. We're going to click this and we're going to press alpha to selection. Now, this is kind of has a select select kind of thing around the side now that shows you that it works. We're going to go new layer. Uh, you don't need to name it. You can if you want. And then we're going to go down to select and grow. Now, I'm going to do grow selection by three uh, pixels. We're going to press OK. Now we're going to go to this toolbox. You're going to choose your color down here. So you're going to choose the color that you want. We're actually going to go here and then we're just going to slide this slightly down that way. Now you can just click that and we're going to go over to this layer and slide it underneath the text layer. This makes it so that it's more back. And now we're going to go new layer again. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually slide that underneath it again and we're going to go select, grow, same kind of pattern like we did before. I always do white around this way though and that's how you get the double kind of border. And now we're going to export it as how whatever you want to name it. I'm going to do just name it how I and I'm going to put it onto my desktop. We're going to export it and export. Now you do that exact same step for however many texts you have. And so let's do that again right now. Once you have all of your font done, you can then go on back onto your web browser. Now this is what I normally do. Um, what I did previous to this video is I actually took a picture of my green screen animal on Animal Jam. So I actually have that picture already saved. Obviously, I'm sure a lot of you guys know how to do green screen by now. So I will not teach you how to do that. But I will teach you how to make it a transparent background. Um, I use a... Uh, I use an editor called Lunapic. Um, it does sometimes get annoying because it's not the best program. However, it is free. Um, and you're just going to go to the front page and you're going to press cut out, just like I previously did. You're going to choose the file that you want. Um, here's the picture I got. It's my, a picture of a sloth. And we're just going to open this up, just like this. Now we're going to go from here and we're going to press magic wand. Just, you're just going to click the green. Now what happens is you can see around it there's kind of a red outline. Um, this means that obviously it's working and it's going to cut out that section. Now we're just going to fiddle around with this a little bit to make sure that it does get a clean cutout. And that's always nice when it does that. And we're just going to go up to the top now and click cut out. You see now this is pretty much how it looks like. Um, you can tell there's a little bit of green here. However, we can easily fix that. So we're just going to press save 
just onto here and it instantly saves onto my folder. So now we're just going to go back onto GIMP and we're going to press open. Ooh, alright. So now what we're going to do is we press open. Now we're going to just go find that picture here. Okay, so we found the picture here. So we're just going to press open. Now, see, it worked pretty well. Um, we're just going to actually zoom in here though. And we're just going to go to the erase tool and we're going to shrink it down a bit. And now we can just delete this leftover gross kind of green right there. Just to make it more pretty. Okay, so once you have the cutout picture, you're pretty much going to want to do the exact same thing that you did for your previous text. So you're going to go back over here, you're going to press alpha 2 selection. We're going to go new layer, and we're going to go behind. We're going to go select, grow again. We're just going to do pixels. And now we're just going to go to the fill book tool and go like that. Now, as you can see, there's a perfect little outline behind our animal. This works very, very well. And yeah, I remember I used to never know how to do outlines around animals. So it was pretty cool when I was able to find this out. So we're just going to export that again. We're going to go into desktop and we're going to write sloth. So now that you have your animal done as well as your text, you can pretty much just close down GIMP. You will not need it again. Now we're going to go into a program called PicMonkey. Um, once again, this is free to use. Now uh, you can go on to enter a custom size. This is very mandatory and you're going to write 1280 for the first box and 720 for the second. This is very important because it needs to be these certain kind of customization sizes in order for it to fit YouTube's standards. So if not, you'll have like black edges around your picture and you don't want that. So you do have to do this size and it's very simple and you're just going to press make it. Now here you go. Now you have just a blank canvas again. Now people, you can fiddle around with this editor and do whatever you like. However, I typically just go to overlays and this is pretty much what I will do the entire time. I never really leave it. And we're going to go here and we're going to find that image that we took at the very beginning of the video. That was our background. So the Appendale trees. So right here, we're just going to open this now. And there we go. So now we have that done. It's very simple. We're just going to make it fit and then there you go. Now we always, I always kind of gave it a little tint of green just so that it fits. Now you guys can do whatever kind of background you want. However, I found this recently. It's a transparent spiral image. Um, this works very well and I like it. Um, but however, once again, this is something that I personally do. So once again, please just don't necessarily copy the style. However, feel free to do stuff like it. Now I'm just going to go here and I'm just going to press fade on it just so it's kind of more transparent, but you can still kind of see it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to open up every one of those font that we had. So you just need to go and find all of that. Alright, so now you can just go and position these wherever you want it and yeah, so we're just going to go like this. Alright, so now we kind of have that the font kind of position where we want it. We're going to go open up that picture that we took before of the sloth. We're just going to flip it around. We're just going to make it bigger. Once again, you can just position it wherever you really want it to be. I'm just going to position it to kind of be over here in the corner. And we're going to bring this font to the front. This just makes it over top of the sloth. So, yeah. Now we're just gonna, so pretty much that's kind of how I should want it. So I have my sloth done, I have all my font in, and I have my background. Okay, so we kind of have just my base done. Um, what I always like to do though is I like to add little sparkles, and PicMonkey actually has a lot of different sparkle overlays that are really fun to play around with. So we just typically go around the edges of our picture and just kind of in the background. Once again, you can fiddle around with these, however, I like the sparkles because they make them look much prettier. And there's my finished product. Um, if this tutorial seems to help you guys, please give it a big thumbs up and like and subscribe. If you guys have any other questions or want other tutorials about what I do and any of that, feel free to leave them down below. I am possibly going to make a Final Cut Pro HMV tutorial 
if you guys are interested in that, please leave that down below too, and I will get started on that. And yeah, as always, I'm Peace Drop, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!